All right, so, so many of us are pissing people off unknowingly, and you have no idea what the things are that you do to cause that effect. So this video is for educational purposes. Here's 30 words and phrases that, uh, excuse me, 30 words and phrases that upset people, right? Um, the prompt that I use, it says, give me a second, can I move that? I don't know if I can move that. List 30 words that upset people when talking to them, words like you should, or words that imply my thought process is superior to yours. And also tell why people seem incapable of realizing their own negative impact on others, right? So let's start with number one, you should. I don't even use you should in sentences. Um, I think that's the worst way to talk to people, right? And look what it says. It says, it implies that you know better than the other person, which creates like a superiority complex, right? And then the way people listen to you when you constantly say you should, it's like, dang, this person thinks they know. They know everything for my life and how I should be. And now they start psychoanalyzing you and where you're not and your shortcomings and maybe even using that against you. And you got to understand if you don't inspire them, right? See, I, I'm more I'm more susceptible to handling you should from someone I look up to, right? Um, if if I look up to some someone, which means they inspire me, which means maybe there's portions of their life which I wish I could duplicate, um, they're probably more inclined to say you should, right? I mean, um, I'm more receptible to listening to them potentially because they are where I wish to be. Uh, the problem is there's so many people in this in this world in this world that give advice and they're not in a place that we admire or like you know what I mean like you don't want to duplicate any aspect of their life so it's like why should you listen to them we're always asking ourselves why should I listen to you you know actually right the word actually right often comes across as correcting or undermining so when someone gets done talking if the first thing you say is actually well you know you're about to give a counter narrative to everything they just said typically right. Um, I didn't even know that. See, I'm learning something right now. Like, I don't use actually. And I think I subconsciously knew not to use this word when talking. You know, I just state my point without saying actually before st stating my point. Because actually, it's almost like, well, actually, you believe this, but, you know, it's actually this way, you know, or actually, you know what I mean? So, number three, but negates what was said before, dismissing the other person's point. A lot of people say that. Like, yeah, they'd be like, let me see if I can give you an example. Uh, okay, I get what you're saying, but, and then they start overemphasizing their point. And then the listener, it's hard for them to think that you get their point when you keep repeatedly saying yours back to them, right? It's like you're sticking on your point. It's like, I get that, but, you know, and it's like, because the listener is like, if you get it, why is there a but? Or why do you have to reemphasize what you're saying, right? So number four, obviously, um, yeah, I don't use obviously when I talk to people, like, you know, I don't be like, oh, well, obviously, it's not everything is obvious, right? And there's probably things that maybe, quote unquote, should be obvious. But for whatever reason, everyone has a different level of intellect. What's easy for me to grasp is going to be hard for you, possibly, or maybe even vice versa, right? Um, sometimes people say things that goes over my head as smart as I am. Um, and sometimes it goes over other people's heads and, you know, vice versa. So when you use the word obviously, it implies that the other person is ignorant for not knowing something just right let me see i didn't even get this far so i don't know what it's going to say just minimizes someone's concerned or efforts let me see just do it okay okay if you're telling someone just do it right like they might be like oh well it's hard or i can't or whatever and it's like bro you just do it bro like you just do it like how hard is it you just do it right you know so um that person what they feel to understand is um the process might not be hard Having a routine might not be hard. Building a new routine, that's the hard part, right? Because humans are so like routine orientated in general and it might be hard to put down one way of doing things for another even though the other way is more helpful or fulfilling or whatever. If you say this, why don't you, it suggests their approach was wrong. Hey, why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? You know, um, you know I didn't even, yeah, see, um, I don't say why don't you. But I didn't know that that could potentially be a trigger, right? So you're wrong, right? Even if someone's wrong, when I'm talking to someone, number seven, right? You're wrong. Directly, direct, uh, directly confrontational and dismissive. Um, yeah, like I just offer a better approach without telling them they're wrong and without comparing my approach, which maybe I think is superior over theirs, but I don't have to explicitly say that to them. So I just give them the new approach without telling them that they're wrong. I let them convey both options in their own head and let them come to their own decisions on how they're gonna navigate life or how they're gonna, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's what decision should they make when they're picking a business or 
how they should change their relationship or how they, you know, um, I'll just leave that up to them, you know. So I, I don't, I don't really say you're wrong, even though some some people be wrong as heck, you know what I mean. But that's no way to correct somebody. I don't think. Anyways, calm down. Oh my God, if the quickest way to get somebody fired up is to tell them to calm down. That's for sure. It often escalates emotions. Uh, it's hard to see past this thing. Often escalates emotions rather than soothing them. You know, calm down could also come across as undermining, as well as the next one, which says it's not a big deal, right? Because what's not a big deal to you is a big deal to them, right? If they have this over exasperated like response, right? Well, they believe that uh, it was appropriate to respond that way. Man, I've dealt with people where I, I really feel like they tripping. You know what I mean? But I know better than to say that, even if that's like how I feel. You know what I mean? Um, I just how can you convey to someone that they're tripping without saying, "Yo, bro, you you wildin' right now." I'm trying to really think like how would you convey that? I don't know. You know. I have to put it in a prompt and see what it, what comes up like. So, you know, it's not a big deal. You got, you always, yeah, generalizes behavior unfairly, right? So when you say, yo, you always do this or you always do that, right? It's making them the, the target or you're, it's like, you're going to feel like their character's being attacked because usually when you say you always, there's something, it could be something negative attached to that typically. Like, yo, you always piss me off or you always trying to like force me to do something or you're always, right? First of all, they're probably not always doing it, you know? Maybe it only happens, I mean, if you only see them like twice a year, right? Is it always happening? No. But and here's why you use the word always, because when you can't stand a certain behavior, right? And you repeat it in your mind. If someone violates you one time, but you repeat the violation in your mind a thousand times to you, the brain can't tell the difference between 1,000 violations and one violation. So now when you express it to the person, it's like, yo, you're always doing this to me. And they're like, yo, what are you talking about? I only did it once or twice or three times, right? But to you, it feels like always because you're always repeating that memory in your mind and your mind can't tell the difference between what you vividly imagine and what you're actually experiencing, right? So number 10, never, you never, you never come through for me. You're never there for me. You never support me, blah, 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 right? It creates resentment through exaggeration. Ooh, that's a good one. Creates resentment through exaggeration, right? So you always and you never. 10 and 11 is just good general terms to avoid. And it's good to get to brush up on understanding the words that you're using and wh how it's impacting people. And, um, you know, because you might not know that. You might not think to even research the self for personal development. Like, you don't understand, right? It implies intellectual or emotionally emotional superiority, right? Number 13, whatever. Dismisses the conversation or the person's viewpoint yeah i don't i don't typically these are all all of these are like a lot of them are like combative in nature like whatever you know you say that when you don't give a damn about the conversation which in turn you say that enough times the person probably feels like you don't give a damn about them right because as soon as whatever they say you don't even try to find understanding if you're just like yo whatever like maybe you're like done with the conversation or you know and what's you got to be careful right because there's people in your life that you, you you value and you treat them a certain way when they leave and now you're mad, you're mad that they left, but it's like, why should they deal with you? You know what I mean? Man, I've heard stories of, uh, you know, kids that run away from home or heard stories of like people that stop dealing with someone else. And you think because you're the parent that your kid is going to like honor you and love you automatically. It's like, yo, if you have a certain personality type, it's possible even for your own kids to dislike you. You know what I mean? It's possible for, you know, people be like, oh, that's my wife. She shouldn't put me through that or she shouldn't, you know, it's my wife. She should sleep next to me. Bro, like if she can't stand you, she'll go sleep upstairs or downstairs or out of the house or at, you know what I'm saying? Or at her sister's house or somewhere else, like, you know what I mean? So, you know, um, oftentimes like we'll get mad at what somebody does, but we don't look at the root cause of the behavior. If your wife can't stand you and she's sleeping like, you know, at her mom's house instead of at, at your place next to you, like what's what kind of arguments are happening that's causing that? You can't come from a vantage point of that's my wife, she shouldn't do that. People do what they feel like doing, even if they shouldn't do it, or even if they should do it. it it's not about should or shouldn't. People are going to behave in a manner that they wish to because they have free will, right? Um, so when you have a mindset of only understanding the world through the lens of it should or shouldn't be, then there's no room for you to live inside of what is happening. You know, you're going to be in a constant fantasy of it should, shouldn't be this way and more prone, more susceptible to anger, right? Because the, the planet's going to do what the planet does. People are going to do what they do. 
Um, you know, so anyways, 14, relax, right? If you say relax to a person, it's no different than telling them to calm down. Dimension, diminishes the person's right to feel upset or concerned. Um, 15, because I said so. Here's a big one. The parents say to kids. It stifles discussion and it assumes... Give me a second. It stifles discussion and it assumes... Give me authority. Uh, do it because I said so. Yeah, I wouldn't... Yeah. Anyways. Um, I'm just being honest. Right, often used to excuse rudeness. Right, a lot of people that other people consider to be rude, they be like, "Yo, I'm just being real." Right, and the other person's like, "No, you're just being a fucking asshole." Right, that's how they respond. So then it's like, okay, seventeen. Let me explain. Can feel patronizing if not handled carefully. I don't know what context they're coming from with number seventeen, so I can't even, you know. Anyway, skipping over that. That's stupid. Right, directly insult someone's thoughts or actions. Right. Um, yeah, like, there's no basis for a conversation there. Um, um, that's not, that's definitely not how you correct somebody by letting them know. You just show them the better way. That's it. You show them the better way and you leave it completely optional. People have the right to be stupid. You know, I know that maybe that sounds crazy to some of you, but you, you know, you, sometimes we'd be like, yo, why are people so stupid? It's because there's, they're under no obligation to be smart. And maybe that's why they're dumb. You know what I mean? Because there's nothing that says you have to be smart. Like there's no... I can't say, I was about to say there's no penalty for being stupid. There's a high penalty that you pay, but it's unseen, unseen to you at the moment because you're still paying the price and you get the total bill at the end of life. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, you, if you wonder why people are stupid, they have free will, right? That's why. Free will will be the reason for a lot of stuff, man. You're overreacting, right? Number 19, dismisses emotions and belittles the person. What's wrong with you, right? I don't even say, uh, put someone on the defense, yeah, you'd be like, yo, like, what's your problem, yo? Or like, yo, what's wrong with you? Like, you know, it's it's more, it's it might be more better to say, instead of saying it this way, number 20, it's like, is everything okay? You know, how, how are you doing? Um, you're, you're probably still thinking what's wrong with you. But if you say what's wrong with you, it's like you're asking for an argument by even saying that. It's more like, yo, has everything be, been okay lately? You know what I mean? Or maybe like, hey, your, your energy seems a little off just wondering if you're all right you know is there anything i could how can i be of service to you today you know that's your problem it lacks empathy and teamwork oh this is a big people say this in arguments all the time that's your problem yeah that's your problem man you always do this you never do that usually that's your problem follows up with you always and you never typically when i listen to people talk everyone knows implies the person is out of touch with reality right everyone knows this to be true right um yeah, everybody knows that. Every, uh, and, you know, usually you state your point and you'd be like, yeah, everybody knows. For me, I send, I'd be sending 10-minute voice clips to people sometimes, 8-minute voice clips. Some people, they'd be like, yo, everyone knows that that length is too long. It's like, actually, there's some people that don't mind that. Generally speaking, like, are people going to complain about a 10-minute voice clip? Yeah, because, uh, you know, I mean, if you look at how people scroll on TikTok, like, you know, it'd be like every two seconds they scroll, scroll, scroll. So I guess it depends, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't think content is ever too long if you enjoy it, though, because people could sit down and listen to Joe Rogan for hours on end. You know what I mean? So anyways, um, you need to. Yeah, you need to. You have to. You ought not to. You know, I don't I don't talk like that to people. It's not a good idea to say you need to comes across as bossy or superior or like you're their mother or father. You know, I told you so. Yeah, when, when maybe you did tell them so, and now they're in a bad situation, and you want to remind them that you gave them previous advice that they didn't listen to. Now that life is kicking their ass, they don't need you to add to the pain that they're already in. I never, personally, I know I, I know better than to say I told you so, right? And I knew these things before I looked up this chat GBT prompt, right? But I'm just seeing, okay, rubs, it, rubs a mistake in their face, right? Fostering resentment. If you were smart, right, this is probably one that people use. If you were smart, you would do it this way. Direct insult to their intelligence. Get over it. You know, number 26. Dismantles the other person's emotions. That's not how it's done. Undermine someone's effort and creativity. You know, instead of saying that's not how it's done, um, try asking like, so what makes you do it this way specifically? Or how long have you been doing it this way? You know, like, yeah. So anyways, no offense, but <laughs> usually right before you're about to say some offensive shit, people say no offense. I'm at 15 minutes. Uh, always, almost always followed by something offensive. Yo, that's typically true. Deal with it. 
shows lack of concern or interest. Yeah, personally, number 29, I used to say this to my ex quite a few times, deal with it. Whenever, uh, I felt like at the time, like she was whiny and just complaining and bitchy and stuff and always wanted me to adjust some shit. And it's like, yo, this is how I am. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't I don't wish to change these things, for you know? And I think the reason that I didn't care as much as maybe I could have is because there was things that she was doing as well that she seemed to have zero interest in changing or accommodating to me. And, uh, you know, one thing I learned in life in general, there's always temporary people that are asking you to make permanent changes. Why is that? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, people come and go, you know? I, I have no interest in trying to change people. Plus, when it comes to me being in your life, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. So it's super inconsiderate of me to ask you to make all these modifications, but yet my time span in your in your life is going to be like six months total, max, like three months. And, and, and if I spend three to six months telling you how to adapt for what? I, I'm going to teach you how to adapt to me just so that I can no longer be present in your life anymore. What the hell is the point of that? There's always a temporary person asking you to make a permanent change. I don't know. Anyways, you're being dramatic. You, yo, fellas, you definitely, you especially don't want to say that to ladies, man. Invalidate someone's genuine feelings. <laughs> You're being dramatic. Anyways, this video is getting longer than 16 minutes. Why people are incapable of realizing their negative impact. Lack of awareness. Many people are unaware of their words, how they come across because they focus on intent. Oh my God, that's a big one. Oh, but my intentions were, let me tell you something about people. They don't care about your intention. They care about your presentation. So if your presentation is... Uh, let's say you have a package, right? And inside of that package, there's several golden bars. All they have to do is open a package, cash out. Their life will be better as a result of them opening the package and taking what you have to offer, right? But if the packaging is full of shit, they're not going to put their hands on it. They're not going to put gloves on. They're not going to look past the packaging. People are surface level for the most part. You know, when it comes to people, people judge presentation, and they don't care what your intention is. When it comes to God, God is judging your intention. And it doesn't matter how you packaged it. So you could package it however. God knows what the root cause of your motivation is. But to people, packaging matters a lot. It's all about packaging, actually. Right? So, lack of awareness. Ego and defensiveness. Yeah, people defend how they are. Or, or like, people often resist admitting fault or wrongdoing because it challenges their self-perception. Uh, this makes them blind to how they hurt others. Um, projection. Some other people share their communication style, emotional resilience, feeling to recognize that their words may land differently than intended. Cultural norms, right? Yeah, some people are just, that's the baseline of how they talk, you know? And they're just so used to, they're programmed to being that way. Everybody's programmed to a degree, right? Well, everyone's programmed, I mean, just not even to a degree. People are programmed, me included, right? Uh, like my philosophy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't choose not to be programmed in this world. You could choose to change the programming. That's the choice that you do have when it comes to mindset, right? Uh, so bluntness is normalized, making individuals less likely to recognize when they're being perceived as rude or dismissive. Impatience is another reason why people might not see the error of their own ways, right? People are in a rush to make a, make a point. Often uh, prioritize efficiency over sensitivity, dismissing the emotional context of their words, right? And people are, uh, you know, people might be more emotional than they are like logical, like in general, you know what I'm saying? Like think about why people can't change their habits because they have an emotion tied to their current ways of doing things, right? It's, it's the reason they've been sleeping on a business idea for six years, seven years. And that business idea would 10X their revenue if only they did it. Why aren't they making a change? Because they've put in the routine for so long of being a certain way for 20 years, 30 years, the older you get and haven't changed, the harder it becomes to change, right? But if you're constantly changing for the better, that you're so accommodated to changing that you don't take any one philosophy to the grave, especially if you believe something that doesn't serve you to believe, right? Habitual behavior. Long-standing patterns of speaking or thinking can desensitize a person. Damn, they really can. Uh, they desensitize people to the impact of their language, making it hard for you to, for, for, to, excuse me, making it hard to see the harm, right? And hard to see it from their vantage point as well. You know what I mean? So anyways, uh, yeah. So that's the end of this. Hope that's useful. And uh, I'm doing another one on sales. I think the prompt is right above this one. Yeah, it's right above. Okay, and I'll share that on the next video.